one of the things we talk a lot about with the angels that we are working with a village is and one of the key uh, evaluative sort of criteria is the ability to collaborate with other venture firms um, and help help their companies fundraise. Um, from the perch of Greylock and any larger venture firm, what do great angels do to be collaborative sources of deal flow to both sell their companies but also be truth tellers about the pros and the cons? And what advice would you have for those of us Mm. doing angel investing to be a great player in the broader venture ecosystem, especially vis-a-vis firms like Greylock? Well, that's a great question, actually. The, uh, it actually parallels the advice that I give entrepreneurs. So, for example, one of the pieces of advice I give entrepreneurs in giving a pitch is to say, proactively, as part of your pitch, identify what are the risks that you see in the company and the risks that you see in the plan and what you're doing about those risks. Because frequently the naive view is, oh, no, no, don't say that, and then we give them a reason not to do it. But if you're pitching anyone who has any intelligence, they know, they, they know it's risky, and they know there's risks. So what I conclude when someone doesn't do that, and when they're talking to me, is they're either hoping to pull one over on me, boy, that's a great beginning of a partnership. Um, they're deceiving me, another great opening, or they're crazy, and they don't see the risk themselves, in which case, oh God, What's this path going to look like, <laughs> right? And so that's that's kind of one of the the kind of counterintuitive pieces of advice that I give entrepreneurs as a central part of how you pitch your business. Obviously, you don't lead with it, but it's there, and it, and it establishes confidence in the part of of your investors who are going to become your prospective partners and board members. A little bit like this, you go from this adversarial to now we're, at, we're married. Okay, well, manage the marriage process. Um, now that's similar in a much more multi-transactional way to angels. So uh, one of the ways that I most often kind of turn down the rheostat on uh, angels is when everything that is pitched to me is, this is the best thing ever. You know, here's the next best thing ever. And this is the one you can't miss. And you're like, and, and you know, and when you met the second one where you're like, what the f***? <laughs> Was I the tenth person you referred this to? <laughs> right, you know, etc. Uh, then it's like, okay, I don't, I don't trust your referral, right? And it's a similar kind of uh, point of view within the, you know. And you, by the way, it's pretty easy to still be bullish. It's like, look, if you like X, Y, and Z, or if you're willing to bet on this risk, then this could be really interesting. But then it's like, okay, you're at least engaging with me, not treating me as a sales prospect. Right, because it's also thinking about how it is, how is it that we're being a partner, right? That we're being partners in this, uh, because the game is really um, is long-term partnership. And frankly, you know, uh, the, the 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 top smart objective for angel investors is to get venture financing, right? That is actually the 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 thing. Because, for example. Uh, I have day jobs, like I had day jobs. I didn't have time to be a venture board member for very many of these things. And even the ones that I did select, like you know Zing and Pincus, that's because I knew Pincus for a long time. So I knew exactly, I was like, yeah, that'll be more time. But I knew exactly how to manage the time. I knew he was a very accomplished you know, um, uh, entrepreneur. And I knew exactly how to kind of navigate that. And so you want to get to, like literally all of the angel investing I did was, okay, Here's a set of things and then get this into a really good venture around, which is a really good partnership, where then the venture person can in part be the, oh, what we need to call you about as well as the entrepreneur. And it's like, call me, like call me if you need something, <laughs> right, as opposed to proactively managing it. And so, you know, part of the, you know, obviously the architecture of Village is to be close to uh, every important venture firm through some network of relationships between the different, the different villagers so that the companies can get connections to the right ones and, um, and then that can uh, maximally uh, have the right outcomes for the entrepreneurs, um, for the companies, um, for the villagers, for the, uh, you know, for the LPs, etc. as a way of doing that. And that, that connectivity uh, really matters.